I think we'll start this out with an example. You the filter chain is you're going to have a pass. Oh, oh, you oh, grab by the function. Oh, yeah, right. We might be wrong. wrong. <laughs> <laughs> We're funny, but not always a pass. What did I do? You're poking me and messing with me when I was playing my game. Oh, I see. All right. Well, darn it. And this is only for two what? minutes. What? Two minutes? Yeah. Next time it's going to be for four. Ah! That's not good. What are you doing? <laughs> That's a rather effective timeout environment, don't you think? <laughs> I, I know I shouldn't be laughing in timeout. It's not supposed to be reinforcing, but the kid did so darn good at it. Um, what he's, he told me I had to go in for two minutes. He told me what I was doing wrong. He gave me a chance to correct myself. I didn't bother to correct myself, so he puts me in timeout. I mean, it's not like he doesn't... Maybe he experiences this enough and he knows what, what to do. I don't know. Anyway, so here we go. So... Um, we're still, this is still a type of exclusionary timeout. As you might imagine, this is a, it's a partition timeout. I can kind of mess with him from here, but it's still a partition timeout, right? So, which is a type of exclusionary timeout. It's kind of that mild one, right? Because I'm still in the environment. He's still playing his video game. I'm still in the room with him. He can still hear me. I could poke my head over and we could mess with each other a little bit. But, um, but technically, being in timeout, I shouldn't be receiving any of the reinforcers at this time, which was me messing with him while he was playing with his game kind of making him mad i suppose so um we're going to come don't, don't let me forget to come back to function with it with regard to timeout because it's an important piece so anyway so that's enough on exclusionary timeout so let's just look at the other types of non-exclusionary timeout so there's several different types of non-exclusionary timeout that we need that, that we could also use now keep in mind i think i think in school settings they prefer to use non-exclusionary timeout for a bunch of reasons. Number one, um, the, the, you get the kiddo gets to experience the educational setting, right? So it's not ethical to always be taking a kiddo out of the uh, um, educational setting. Now, there's some I'm kind of hemming and hawing because I can see value in it and I cannot. But anyway, schools tend to say no. Kiddos need to be in the academic setting as much as possible. Um, so we can use timeout, but we want to do non-exclusionary timeout. So. One of the fun types of non-exclusionary timeout that, that Jay could have used would be like planned ignoring. Now, planned ignoring is useful if I'm engaging in like social reinforcers, if I'm talking, if I'm trying to bug him and trying to get his attention type thing. Um, so I could have had him set up a scenario where I was yakking at him and talking at him and he just kind of does this. He could kind of turn his back on me a little bit. He could still play his game. But if I'm back there, now I'm not getting any attention from him. So I'm, it's a planned ignoring scenario, right? It doesn't have to be a complete turning your back on somebody, but you can just kind of orient away from them, if you will, okay? So that's planned ignoring. The other one, which um, there's a bit of history here on our channel, uh, which is kind of funny, but we'll, we'll get back to that some other time with error correction procedures, um, is a, a contingent observation. So uh, I was messing with Jake here. You know, we were he was playing his game, and I was messing with him. Um, he could have said, you know what? I've had enough. You need to go sit over there. I have told you to stop messing with me. You need to go sit down, stay over there, and you can watch me for the next five minutes while I play a game. So contingent observation, right? So I sit over here in the corner, away from it. And now, ideally, you wouldn't want me to be able to see the game on the screen because I assume that's kind of reinforcing because that's what everybody does nowadays is watch other people play video games, which is weird to me, but not weird to everyone else that does it. So as the cameraman effectively blocks my screen, it's a great example of contingent observation where I get to watch Jacob over there having fun playing the game, but I don't get to participate for the next five minutes. Obviously, I'm talking in timeout right now. This is not something we would normally allow, but I'm lecturing, so give me a minute, all right? Or give me a break. So, contingent observation. Get kind of moved to the side, if you will. You observe what's going on in the environment. You just don't get to participate. So no fun for you, right? So no fun for you. You just get to sit and watch everybody else have fun. And that's a type of time now. Um, let's see. What... Oh, we could do um, 
there's there's a fun one called the timeout ribbon, right? So timeout ribbons are kind of cool because when you're in the environment, you can get, uh, you, you want the you want to signal to the kiddo that reinforcement is available. Okay, maybe reinforcement's available while you're wearing a ribbon, right? So the original experiments with Fox and, and colleagues um, was about actually having a ribbon on the kiddo um, and then to signal that reinforcement is available. Now, there's a couple of things I'd like to add to that in a minute, but let me get through the example first, which is, so let's assume this is the ribbon, all right? So now if I'm engaging in inappropriate behavior, teacher comes along and takes off the ribbon. It's nice and easy to see for me that I am no longer receiving reinforcers. They're not available. The teacher can also see that I'm no longer receiving reinforcers. And then, once that timeout is up, once that timeout ribbon, once that procedure is up, okay, a couple of minutes, and I can go, oh, we can go put the ribbon back on. I'm not going to retie this thing, but you get the idea, right? So now the ribbon's back on, reinforcement is available. That's ugly, I get it. But anyway, so reinforcement is available when the ribbon's on. I tend to like kind of the opposite way. It's, um, it's the same procedure, but it inverses the stimuli. So if you put the ribbon on when the kiddo is to receive timeout, then it's it reminds you that the the regular environment should always be reinforcing. It should be highly reinforcing, right? So then when you get the ribbon on, you're going to get timeout, right? Um, so that's just another way to do it. Um, and it also signals to the kiddo um, that timeout is a, is on when the ribbon is on. So either way works. If you look at um, Fox and other and other people that have done studies on the thing, they, they did it the way I first described it. Um, but it doesn't have to be that way. Just keep in mind the principles work um, in general, right? You don't have to follow these studies per se. You can test the principles that we know about. So you can use those in different ways. So anyway, that's those two things. The other thing I wanted to remind that I, I promised you you would remind me about, or I asked you to remind me about, would be the function. So timeout's a great procedure <laughs> unless the function of behavior is escape, right? If the function that's maintaining the problem behavior is escape from the environment, escape from the demand, escape from the task, escape from the person, escape from whatever you need to escape from, then timeout might be highly reinforcing. So please, don't use timeout if escape, if the behavior is escape maintained, right? So there's also a whole bunch of, a whole slew of other things we could get into with regard to timeout, um, but they're also covered in other places really well. So I just want you to remember a couple of things. Timeout from positive reinforcement. You can do timeout while the person is in, in the environment. You just remove the sources of reinforcers. You can do signal timeout or non-signal timeout. That's the timeout ribbon thing. Um, and let me see what else. Uh, contingent observation. <laughs> when I was a kid, uh, we had these dunce seats, right? So if, it was called the hot seat. I remember Mr. Mortlock. Um, in fact, in fact, Jacob actually had Mr. Mortlock at the same school. Yeah, it's a funny story. Mr. Mortlock used to do this thing where if you were out of line, if you'd be, it was the monkey chair, that's it. So you would sit in the middle of the room because we had our desks in a circle and they were all facing each other. And then if you were the inappropriate, if you're doing something inappropriate, they would stick you in the middle. It was, uh, um, and you got to watch everyone else have fun and participate in the class and have Mr. Mortlock. He was an awesome teacher. So he was really exciting, really fun class to be in. So when you got into that environment and you got into that chair, man, that was an awful, awful situation. And I remember being in there two or three times um, over the course of a year, but it, it, it's, it rings. I can tell you who I was facing when I was in that chair. That's how salient that, that, uh, that experience is for me. So that was a long time ago. I'm not going to tell you how old I was. I will tell you that was in fifth grade. So anyway, I think that's enough. We've covered exclusion timeout, non-exclusion timeout, and um, some of the different pieces that go along with that. So keep that in mind as you go out there to try to modify behavior uh, and uh, help people... Um, do well in their world. So anyway, I think that's enough. I'm going to go back to video games because that's highly reinforcing to me today. Bye.